Hello, fellow fragrance lovers. Welcome back to my channel. I am here today with, I mean, this is my favorite type of video. If I had the means, I would do this type of video like every day, <laughs> pretty much. Um, and it's also my favorite type of video to watch other fragrance YouTubers do. And of course, that is the infamous blind buy. Now, if you've been following my channel from the beginning, which was only a couple months ago, um, I started out with a lot of anxiety around the whole blind buy thing. I still do get a little bit of anxiety about it. However, I'm realizing that you also get quite a rush from it. It's, it's like invigorating. It makes you feel alive. There is nothing like the feeling of a successful blind buy haul, for sure. So today I have some fragrances that I am dying to try because uh, they came, some of them came two days ago and some came yesterday and I waited to film to, to actually do, you know, the, the blind testing. So I'm just like a little kid on Christmas morning. I cannot wait to smell these smells. So let's get right into it. So the first one, I'm so, 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 so excited about this one because I feel like everybody talks about it, especially two of my favorite YouTubers, um, Paulina Shar and Jeremy Fragrance. And now Paulina is saying there's a rumor that this is going to be discontinued. So I don't know, but that is Poison Girl. And I have the EDT of Poison Girl by Dior. Now the top notes in this one are frosted orange, bitter orange, and lemon. Mid notes are neroli, orange blossom, grass rose, and damask rose. And then the base notes are vanilla, caramel, tonka bean, heliotrope, and cashmere. So I have high hopes. Okay. Um, so right off the bat, Definitely getting the orange and the lemon. It's a good first impression, by the way. I'm just trying to figure this out. Um, hmm, yeah, uh, it is citrusy. I smell the rose though, and and to me, it's kind of a weird combination, like orange and caramel, but that's what I'm getting, and, and it's good. The caramel's way in the back. But I'm wondering in the dry down if I'll get more of that. Probably. Mm, but it smells really good. It's sexy, but it's not uh, overly strong or deep. Now, this is the Eau de Toilette version. Maybe the Eau de Parfum is deeper, but okay. Now a little bit of that zestiness from the citrus is dying down. Mm, I'm getting more of the vanilla and the caramel and the tonka. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Oh geez, I hope they don't discontinue it. It's apparently very successful, so I don't know why they would do that. Okay, so this gets a limelight last two thumbs up. So that is Dior Poison Girl. Hmm, it really smells good. This might be my scent today. I'm going to take a shower and wash all this off of me right after this. And then I'll, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking Poison Girl. Wow, it smells really good. It smells really, really good. It's a good, um, it's a good mix of like fresh, floral, and... Gourmand. Gourmand, but with a citrus edge. Okay. I'm going to say, yeah, that's a success. All right, moving right along. Now, I know this is silly, but I hear so many people say it's good. This is silly. Now, look, I love Nicki Minaj, and I know there are feelings about celebrity scents. I happen to like some of them, but this is Nicki Minaj, Onika. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the bottle is just it is silly. It's silly. Um, I've smelled Pink Friday. I smelled Pink Friday when it first came out, and I do remember liking it, but I never got it. Um, but some YouTubers have said this one smells really good. So the top notes in this are pear, carambola, which is star fruit, and mandarin orange. Mid notes are orchid, osmanthus, and water lily. And then the base notes are sugarcane, white musk, and cedar. 
I mean, it's so silly. But I'm also very silly, so I can't really <laughs> say anything. I love Nikki. I mean, to me, she's just tops. Ooh. Mmm. This is like really fresh and fruity. It's really fresh and fruity. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, now I get one of the reviews said something like that it smelled like a bowl of Fruit Loops. And I get that. You do get the pear pretty prominently. And the water lily, because I have something else with water lily. I feel like it's one of the Hollister, you know, one of those types of fragrances. But you get the sugar cane and the musk. Yeah, I mean, it's sweet. It's very sweet and fruity. With a tiny bit of a musk to it. This is really pleasant. It's something that I feel like would be a good, you know, they call them like easy grab, easy reach, whatever you want to call them. And also a crowd-pleasing scent. Like, I can't see anyone saying, like, I hate, I don't know, but maybe you hate Onika. <laughs> Tell me in the comments. But I personally can't imagine anyone objecting to this. It's just a very pleasing, sweet, fruity smell. And really good for summer. So I'm glad that I got it. So, okay. That's also Limelight Last, two thumbs up. That is Nicki Minaj, Onika. Next one. I have never heard of this in my entire life. I have never heard anyone talk about it. It was super cheap. So I took a chance. And uh, that is DKNY Be Delicious Pool Party Mai Tai. And now I like Mai Tais as a drink. So I'm wondering, you know, will I like a fragrance that's a Mai Tai? I don't know. But the top notes are orange oil and pink pepper. Mid notes are peach and floral notes. And the base is solar notes and amber. So, I mean, these all sound good to me. I know it's weird. Like, I know it's weird <laughs> that I, I'm, like, putting these in all kinds of awkward areas. And I know people do, like, test strips. I might have to eventually because I'm going to run out of room. But I just feel like you really can't test it. Truly test a fragrance unless it's on your skin. Wow. So this is... This straight up smells like a Mai Tai. Like, <laughs> it's super fruity. And I'm not mad about it. Actually, I'm not mad about it at all. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> so awkward. Mmm. It's really fruity. It is really um very orangey and peachy. But I do get the, I do get a little bit of the amber and the floral notes in there. So I would say if you want like a really good, um, affordable, fun, this is super like pool, beach. People will be, I'm sure people will be complimenting you on this because it's really good. I've just never heard anybody ever talk about it. So I'm glad that that was successful. It's another Limelight last, two thumbs up. So that is DKNY Be Delicious Pool Party Mai Tai. And the bottle's really cute. Now there are a couple others in this series, the Pool Party series. And now I'm kind of curious about them. Because again, I got this from FragranceNet and it was, with the coupon and everything, it was super cheap. Like under $20 cheap, I believe. Now again, this is a blind test. So I don't know about longevity. I mean, this could be gone in a half hour. I don't know. But this is also one of those fragrances, especially because it's so affordable. Um, I wouldn't mind spraying this again. Like to me, it's not a big deal. I know some people make a really big deal about like, oh, you have to reapply. That doesn't really bother me. Darn, that is good. Like that is really good. Hidden gem right here. You can thank me later. All right. Moving on. And now this came, um, with, or this, I got this with my rewards points from Sephora. So it's just this tiny little bottle, but you know, I wish I could get more of these little teeny, like, look how cute. Because with all the perfumes that I have, this was actually perfect. So this is the Mist Your 
eau de toilette. Now, I used to wear Miss Dior uh, Cherie back in the day, but I don't think I've ever smelled Miss Dior, just the regular Miss Dior. Top notes in this are blood orange. It's one note, blood orange. Mid notes of damask rose, Bulgarian rose, and neroli, and then base note of patchouli. So it sounds like a very simple fragrance profile. Oh, it's one of these where you have to like... Maybe I'll put this one on my hand. Okay. Okay, now I'm paranoid that this cap's not going to go all the way back on. Do you ever get paranoid about packaging? Because I... Oh, you got to screw it on. Okay. Um... That's nice. Um, yeah, it's rosy, but the orange and the neroli give it some zestiness. The patchouli's way in the back, unless you're going to get it more in the dried out. Let me check on Poison Girl. Yeah, Poison Girl still smells good. Yeah, the Miss Dior, I like it. It's fresh. It's a, it's definitely fresher than what I normally wear. But then again, normally I wear like really heavy scents. So it's not really saying much for me. Like I could see someone else who wears freshies all the time thinking this, this is heavy. And this is just the EVT. Yeah, you know what? Now it's drying down. It's actually quite nice. It's really classy. Sophisticated. It's really pretty. Okay, well, that's another Limelight Last two thumbs up. So that is uh, the Miss Dior EDT. Okay, moving on to something a little more heavy. And I did not know about this, um, but I guess I, it was super Jacob um, talked about this. And now I know this is a reformulation. This was originally from the 50s, and then it, it got a reformulation at some point. And, but the notes in it sound like totally up my alley. So this is Cabochard. I love the bottle. The bottle used to be different and then they made it like this and I think it's really cute. So the top notes in Cabochard are aldehydes, uh, galbanum, and sage. Mid notes of Lang Lang, Rose, and Jasmine. Base notes of Oak Moss, Leather, Patchouli, and Sandalwood. I like, you know, the notes appeal to me because it, it's very much a profile, a scent profile of those classic, you know, vintage-y scents. And I like that. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I like that. So give it a whirl here. Oh yeah, this is um, strong. <laughs> right off the bat, it's very strong. Um, I believe the same, oh, what's his name? I forgot his name. The, the creator of this perfume also created, uh, the original one, not this one, also created Halston and Aromatics Elixir. I get that, like, the type of DNA from those other two in this completely. If you like Aromatics Elixir by Clinique or Halston Classic, oh, this is so good. It's really, like, I very leathery. Mm-hmm. A lot of leather and patchouli. Slightly out of headache. I mean, that's on the top notes. Get the galbanum. I'm not getting too much of the rose. A little bit. It's strong. I would say this is for fall or winter, for sure. But it's beautiful. And again, like, these oldies, <laughs> vintage oldies, um, are so affordable. And that's what I love about them. But this is like, this makes a statement. I can tell you no one around you is going to smell like this. Okay. Limelight last two thumbs up. That is Cabochard. Eau de Parfum, by the way. Um, it is really potent. So if you like potent perfumes, okay, I'm going to switch these out here because I have a couple more to share with you. <sighs> okay. Let me get my notes here because... You know me and my nose. Oh, so I'm going to be doing a 70s perfume 
video. So I did get some for that, but like I, I wanted to do a blind buy of them first before I make that video. But spoiler alert, this is one of the ones that's going to be in my 70s perfume video. And that is Sierra by Revlon. And this came out in 1973. I've seen this around forever. And strangely enough, I've never smelled it. So I don't know. We'll, um, we'll see what happens with this one. But the top notes are raspberry, neroli, bergamot, and lemon. Mid notes, Brazilian rosewood, lang lang, RS, jasmine, and pomerosa. And base notes of aquaponics, incense, leather, vanilla, musk, and cedar. Incense and leather, man, I'm sold. You know me by now. Okay. Whoo! Yeah, that is very strong. <laughs> it's very strong. Um, you know, it's just a really generic, I mean, I don't want to say generic, but it's typical strong 70s, like deep, yeah, 70s beast mode fragrance. Okay, but I like it. It has like a fiery aspect to it, and I love anything with fire. Yeah, if you don't like that like burning smell in your fragrance, you won't like this at all. Now, I got the 80% intensity. They have 100%. But the 80 to me is plenty strong. <laughs> it's good though. It's really incensey. It's really incensey and musky and leathery. <laughs> but I mean, again, I, I mean, you can get it for like $10. I love that. I look, you know, you know by now, I love my budget friendly scents. <laughs> But in one of the reviews, someone was saying, like, if you just, if you package this in a niche, you know, bottle or whatever, or put it out under a niche brand, people would pay way more for it. And I agree. I agree. Okay. So that is Revlon Sierra. Two thumbs up for that one. Okay. Oh my gosh. I am going to be so smelly. All right. This next one. Oh my God. Where did it even go? Where did it go? Did they not? Oh. I might not have it. There was, <laughs> sorry. Well, we're going to go with this one then. Um, I have a Lulu by Casherel. Now, when I was researching 80s fragrances, um, this came up, but I did not put this one in my 80s for, I didn't have it for that. Uh, and this is the bottle. Apparently it was a very popular 80s fragrance, but for some reason I didn't know about it. Like I didn't wear it. So Lulu is top notes are plum, Chinese cinnamon wood, iris, violet, jasmine, lily, anise, mimosa, and cassia. Mid notes are lang lang, heliotrope, orris root, orange blossom, and Tahitian tiara flower. And base notes are incense, vanilla, benzoin, sandalwood, and musk. Ooh, I sprayed my, I think I sprayed too much. Uh, now that I'm smelling this, it smells familiar to me. It's really cinnamony. Oh my gosh. Does anyone wear Lulu or have <laughs> you smelled Lulu and just get like straight up cinnamon? This to me smells like big red gum. Like it literally smells like big red. <laughs> and I'm not mad about it. I'm going to let that like percolate because I'm sure the notes come out a little more in the dry down. But right off the bat, it smells like big red gum to me. Yeah, it's inter it's really interesting. So if you like things that are, if you like fragrances that are a little bit like off the beaten path, a little bit like different, a little unusual. Yeah. Lulu. Lulu. Okay, two thumbs up for that one. Oh my gosh, I have more. <laughs> okay, this one, I believe, um, who was it? Um, 
Sebastian from Smelling Great Fragrances. I got the idea because I had no about idea about this. I remember like the regular jupe fragrances back in the day, but this is jupe le bain. And for this one, the top notes are aldehydes, orange blossom, bergamot, and lemon. Mid notes are sandalwood, jasmine, cedar, rose, and lily of the valley. And base notes are tonka bean, vanilla, amber, musk, and patchouli. I don't know where to spray this. Oh my God. I guess my elbow. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. I like this one. I mean, I like all of them. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it's deep vanilla. Tonka. Again, I'm not getting too much of the aldehydes. I mean, a little bit. Yeah, no. Yeah. That, that aldehyde quality in, like, number five. It doesn't smell like number five, but that aspect of it. Yeah, musky, amber, vanilla. Hmm. Okay, I like this. This is another two thumbs up. These are all really good. I'm really proud of myself because I mean, I'm killing it. I can't believe I had one more. Well, well, I'll just have to put that in a different video. Okay, I have one more. And this, I just got the little like decant of it, but uh, one of my wonderful subscribers commented on my 80s video um, that she likes uh, Issa Tease. By the way, I had to look that up by Givenchy because if it were up to me, I would have just been like, you say this. No, it's Issa Tease. I don't know what that means. I don't speak French. I don't even know if that's French. Is it French? I don't know. Okay. So this is a powerful 80s perfume. Top notes are aldehydes, lang lang, orange blossom, galbanum, and Brazilian rosewood. Oh, and coconut, and bergamot, and mandarin orange, and citruses. Woo! Mid notes, tuberose, but hopefully it's that 80s tuberose that I am okay with. Jasmine, narcissus, carnation, rum, iris, and rose. And then the base, civet, honey, oak moss, sandalwood, cloves, amber, patchouli, musk, vetiver, laurels, and vanilla. Holy cow. That's... A lot of notes right there. Okay, you know what? I mm, okay. I, I feel like there's nothing like right there. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Oh, this smells familiar. Like I guess this was one that you know it's an '80s perfume that I guess women wore, but maybe they didn't announce it like they did with. I feel like everyone it was like I'm wearing Obsession or I'm wearing Poison. Or you just knew they were because they were so, they were around so much. But I think many women were probably wearing Issa Tease, but maybe not talk. I don't remember anyone ever saying this word to me in my childhood. Wow, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Um, so thank you <laughs> to my subscriber who recommended it. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not too into Givenchy fragrances. Um, I go back and forth with Lindrigy because, like, sometimes I try it and I'm like, okay with the tuberose, and sometimes I'm not. This is really good. It's very 80s. Like, it's very 80s power fragrance, but not too strong. It's not as in your face as some of the other 80s fragrances. It's a little bit softer. It's really beautiful. Um, I'm trying to see, what do I get most in this? It's really interesting because you get the rum and the coconut and, and all of that, but you also get the, like, the vetiver, definitely the patchouli, but a little bit of citrus on the top, too. So, all right, well, there you have it. Yeah, that was a lot of perfume. And guess what? All of them were limelight last two thumbs up. Yes! I love when that happens. So, well, hope you uh, all have a wonderful day. Please, 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 if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate like this video, share all of that. I'm trying to grow so I could use all the help I could get. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.